across our blue planet, we're becoming increasingly more aware of the importance of coastal, marine and ocean resources. At the same time, we're becoming more aware of the complexity. Oceans cover 71% of the Earth's surface, are home to 2.2 million species, they regulate the global climate, and they are the basis of more than 3 billion people's livelihood over the world. And let's not forget, they are also the cornerstone of the global economy, contributing about $1.5 trillion annually. The ocean and marine resources are especially important to the Pacific Island, being the heart of the culture and the livelihood there. Water is everywhere in the Pacific. This means achieving SDG 14 under the 2030 agenda, but also much beyond that time frame, is essential for their development. It also makes Pacific Islands the best proponents and innovators in terms of progressing SDG 14 and challenging the status quo. This is why there is such an urge to better track, report, communicate and cooperate in SDG 14. This handbook is the product over, of over a year of consultation and collaboration with international, multi-stakeholder community of practice. It was co-produced specifically for government authorities and individuals, along with supporting organisations who are re responsible for reporting, building evidence, but also managing and making decisions in the areas of SDG 14. It is built to get people up to speed with what monitoring, evaluation and learning is and what a good mail system is for them. In that sense, it helps people think through their current marine system to identify and develop mail systems that can capture what works, how, why and for whom. The handbook gives the background and a step-by-step -step guidance to the often seemingly complicated world of evaluation and the SDGs. It gives tools, tips, examples and references that are accessible to all and can be taken through at one's pace. It works on the basis of the formal reporting processes for the SDGs through the established custodian agencies. But within that framework, the handbook also encourages countries to take ownership of their own goals and shape how they see the future for the marine world. This process does force us to think and to look at the tough choices that we have to make when designing and implementing policies across different domains that affect the environment and people's lives. But it also sheds light on the opportunities where combined effects between domains can be catalyzed for positive development outcomes. Now, this handbook is only the first edition and the first steps towards hopefully a long collaboration between different stakeholders and a growing community of practice that will work towards using MEL for sustainable development. If the world is to make significant progress towards achieving sustainable development goals, high-level actors really need to push for new ways to learn and think about the synergies and trade-offs of all the 17 SDGs. In that sense, we cannot consider SDG 14 on its own or any other SDGs. These have to be taken into account together. And evaluation plays a key role in addressing this complexity. In fact, it is the basis upon which learning and cooperation are built to accelerate progress and to bring the transformation needed for success in conserving and using oceans, seas, marine and coastal resources in a sustainable way. We very much hope that this handbook is only but a first step in understanding the complexity of issues at play and driving changes for a better marine world.